Hey everyone, Harrison Bowen here for CervicalDizziness.com and today we're really talking about the latest study by Lee et al. in 2019. Really <clears throat> just chatting about uh, the, for our knowledge, the, uh, the only long-term results of a minimally invasive uh, surgical procedure for cervical genetic dizziness. And um, so in terms of physical therapy concepts associated with this, like we really want to avoid surgery, right? And our goals are to uh, help assist others in manual therapy, sensory motor training, exercise, conceptual wise, so somebody doesn't have to go through this concept of having some sort of surgery to improve um, dizziness of cervical origin. But uh, to my knowledge, uh, this is the first long term study of any type of procedure to help um, a cervical genetic dizziness from a surgical standpoint, and it's a minimally, minimally invasive procedure. Uh, and you can read a lot in the blog, but uh, in the study itself, uh, I can send to you if you need to, but the one thing I, I, that comes from the study I really want to chat about is that one of the last conclusions that the authors talked about is comparing this to, in the future, prospective randomized control trials, what's needed to compare this surgery to manual therapy, because they didn't have that uh, in, in this study, right? They were just showing that this can show improvement in someone. So in the long run, really what we want to show is that, well, gosh, manual therapy or conservative measures actually is just as good or even potentially better than uh, surgery for this population. Um, and the title of what's going on here is that we really want uh, manual therapy or physical therapy in, in exact terms there to, to win out. We, we really want this to uh, take over and show from a randomized control trial from something of uh, higher evidence. We already had the systematic reviews, right? Um, that shows that, hey, manual therapies include mobilizations and or manipulations is, is effective. Um, and then some of the acupuncture work showing some of those soft tissue points can be effective as well from the only man analysis at this point. Um, we do have long-term results uh, through Susan Reed's work. Phenomenal stuff. We talk about it all the time through the blog and through our teachings that this is really, uh, quite frankly, the best of best that we can have. You know, if you're looking at research and you're looking at um, seeing if something works, we want obviously short-term results, case studies, that type of things, but we want long-term results. Now, we do have the one-year results that show that uh, manual therapies are effective for cervical dizziness. This one particular studies, uh, study actually shows that surgery is effective too. The only long-term study I know of is Malsham's work that actually had a two-year um, recovery or follow-up. And again, that showed that manual therapy in addition to other soft tissue exercise kind of work is effective too. So uh, ultimately, if Lee and the colleagues come out and have a randomized control trial or a prospective randomized control trial, uh, hopefully we'll see that manual therapies are just as effective. I'm sure there are a small percentage of people who uh, don't respond to the manual therapies and exercise therapies. Um, but uh, this is kind of tough almost an extent in studying this group because in a randomized control trial, especially if you take, say, uh, Susan Reed's work, you know, they'll look at uh, Maitland mobilizations or SNAGs. And we know with uh, a, a very challenging condition such as uh, neck pain, especially if you have dizziness associated with it, you might have to dive into more of the sensor motor, the postural control kind of work. Um, you don't really get that with a randomized control trial because you've got to narrow down what procedures are performed, right? And so uh, we always think of it as uh, what we consider our physio blend is that not only do we attack and, and go after these symptoms manually, calm it down, get the improvement and what needs to get movement wise, but we look at these other systems, right? We look at addressing some vestibular system, sensor motor exercise, strength training, uh, motor control approach. Uh, that's a tough thing. You can't have that in a research study, but this is what we kind of teach for this population, especially the complicated ones. And the complicated ones that might fit into, say, Lee, Lee's study in 2018 that didn't respond to three weeks, which really isn't that long uh, of, uh, of therapy. They don't know exactly what type of therapies they had that fit in, in these individuals fit into this surgical group. But we definitely want to just uh, hopefully see if this study comes out that it favors in our, in, on our hands. Um, and sometimes we may not be able to get that. But uh, I don't know what you guys think in terms of your treatments, uh, but kind of read the blog. Um, read the study, uh, see what you think and see what we can do to further help individuals with these conditions. Thank you.